Mexico is a country rich in history, tradition, and culture, and is made up of 31 states and one federal district. It is the third largest country in Latin America and has a population of more than 100 million people. Mexico's rural areas are still inhabited by indigenous peoples, and many of the pre-Columbian ruins, like the Mayan pyramids, still exist. In a previous episode, Diplomat TV's young ambassador Giselle visited the former ambassador of Mexico. Buenos dias, embajador. How are you? You are on a bike. Ambassador on yes. a bike. I didn't really Always. expect that. Always. Always. How are wow, you? Wow, I'm fine, thank you. Ambassador, do you love your bike? Oh, yes. Ambassador Eduardo Ibarola Nicolin has been replaced by the new ambassador, Judge Edgar Elias Azar. Judge Edgar Elias Azar has more than 40 years' experience in the public sector and in the administration of justice in Mexico. What was the reason that uh, the president appointed me as ambassador of, of, uh, of Mexico here in The Hague? The Hague is the capital of justice in the world, and for lawyers and judges, this is a paradise. When Ambassador Azar returned to his embassy, he gave a speech to introduce himself to the representatives of the business and diplomatic community. Excellencies, representatives of the diplomatic corps and international organizations, government officials, members of the business community, dear friends. For me, it has been the highest peak of my career to find myself here among you and in this beautiful country. The Netherlands have seen, historically speaking, a country of wises women and men, the cradle of liberalism and the real guardian, guardian of liberty. Thank you for coming and please feel welcome and at home. Remember that this Casa de Mexico opened the heart and you all of you can say that this is la casa de todos ustedes. Thank you. Muchas gracias a todos por venir. Young Ambassador Olivia was able to meet with the new ambassador. Olivia, welcome to the Mexican Embassy. Please sit down and we are very, very happy to have you here. So Your Excellency, first of all, thank you so much for receiving us here in the Embassy to conduct the interview. And the first question that I'd like to ask you is for you to tell us about your career as a diplomat. My experience has been in the courthouses in Mexico. I was the head of the Supreme Court, uh, local Supreme Court in Mexico City for 10 years. And I worked for that court for 35 years. And the end of my career in the judicial system was being the head of that uh, court, which handles over 358,000 cases a year, which makes one of the biggest courts in the world. Do you prefer working in the diplomatic service or in the courthouse? It's very difficult to tell you what, what I prefer because when I was appointed by the president of Mexico, Enrique Peña, as ambassador in, Mexico, in, uh, in the Netherlands, I mean, that's something very different, but nothing less of important than what I did being a judge. I mean, to be an ambassador is a, a beautiful experience. It's something that everybody has to be proud of that. I mean, to represent your country to have your flag in your heart, the place where that you were born, the place where you grew up, the place where you were educated. And you want to tell, shouting in the streets, I mean, I want to go there and to shout what is Mexico. I want everybody to know my, my, my country. I want everybody to respect my country and to discover the beautiful things that we have. What is the current situation in Mexico in terms of economics, politics and tourism? Well, that uh, question I can divide it in two parts. The first one, Mexico has done, Presidente Peña has done a very terrific reforms, very deep reforms about oil, about education, about tourism. I mean, we're, well, we are one of the first 10 countries on the world, you see, that has been visited. And in oil, now we can get oil from the deep seas. The reserves, the federal reserves of, uh, in the bank are growing up. We are protected against terrible and deep devaluations. I mean, about talking about economics, everything is perfect. But what, what is the dark shadow that I see in the future? Dark shadow I see in the future, which is uncertainty, 
is what is going with the NAFTA, with the free trade the market and with the treatment that we have to, with the United States. You know that we are the second provider of the United States and for us NAFTA is very, very important. But that problem is going to give us a very big win for Mexico. What is going to be the winning for Mexico? The winning for Mexico is going to be that, uh, that, uh, that, that problem that we have obliged us to turn the face to Europe and to see that we have a lot of, a lot of opportunities, of trading opportunities here in, in Europe, especially with the, with the biggest merchants in the world, which are the, the Dutch people. Which Mexican industries do you believe have the most potential to thrive within the Netherlands? What I think is there are two sectors that, that I think can be very successful. The first one is agriculture. We're exporting a lot of things, not only avocado. I mean, everybody talks about the guacamole here, but I mean, we are not the guacamole factory. We are more than that. And uh, we have a lot of things, vegetables that we can sell to Europe, especially to the Netherlands. And I think agriculture is going to, has a very big potential. Oil too, oil too has, has a very big potential too. And uh, well, tourism, of course. When I say tourism, I, I feel like everybody has to go to Mexico. No, but nobody can die without knowing Mexico. It's a paradise, Acapulco. Are there any specific goals that you have that you'd like to achieve throughout the course of your posting here in the Netherlands? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, the first thing I want to, to, to work very hard for my country. That's the first thing. In all the fields that I can handle. I want to promote commerce. I want to promote the trading. Of Mexico, we have a special office here to promote trading. We have our courts, our courthouses working properly. The institution of justice are working perfect, and uh, the one that has been punished is punished, and the one that is not is not fair to be punished is not punished. The institutions are working in Mexico. I believe in my country. I know what is going on in my country, I know the problems of my country, and I know that my country is doing beautiful. It's a beautiful place to live, it's a beautiful place to trade, and it's a beautiful place to for travel. So thank you for taking the time for this interview, and is there any last thing that you'd like to share with us? Yes. Yes, I would like to show you something that uh, means all my life. Inside this, uh, this beautiful hammer, I don't know how to say it in English, but I mean in, in Spanish we call mayete. This hammer means the order and the power of a judge. And this specific uh, hammer, you see, keeps all my life here. And I keep it like part of my life. I mean, here in this uh, part, in this piece of wood, in this, piece, uh, in this hammer, you see, are inside hundreds of resolutions that I did dictate as a judge. You got uh, respect from the lawyers, I mean, when you dictate good resolutions and fair resolutions and honest resolutions. And this hammer remembers all my life. This is the most precious thing I have, uh, I mean, keeping with me and it's going to be with me the rest of my life and, and for the eternity. I'm, I want to be burned, you see, with my hammer inside. The session is closed. Thanks for watching Diplomat TV.